power gives you an opportunity to act destructively. Because of this, we need to address a serious question. How can we get leaders to understand the degree of moral responsibility and courage that comes with power? As a leadership trainer working with conventional program, I wanted to know if there is a better way to help leaders become more responsible. So, one day, a group of 50 managers and about 200 subordinates arrived to provide blood samples. Then, some weeks later, 25 of the managers are told where to go and when without any other explanation. They are also told that they might feel uncomfortable. Once they arrived, they are led into a black painted room with no windows. Again, no presentations, no explanations. There is simply a man and a woman alone on an empty stage, with music, a fragment of poetry, like this. Already he shouts after her. One is she, my dove, my undefiled. Your tongue, honey and milk. The fragrance of your garments is like the smell of Lebanon. She's not coming. This woman, she never feels really on earth. The son, who for so many years has been the unloved here, he is now in his bed. Faded, the child, and though her whole world. The tiger like this. Tenderly kisses the mother her little boat that sails around the world. Then she takes a plastic bag. Murder. And death, fine, quiet waves. For love is as strong as death. So goes the world. Straight in to us. The black room and the blood samples, the poetry and the music are all part of a leadership training study. As an artist and musician, I know the power of the arts, and the idea for this unusual experiment comes from an art form that I invented, a collage of rapidly changing words and music that I called shibboleth, a word meaning crossing boundaries. I noticed that the tensions and the contradictions of the text and music provoke strong emotions and the feeling of instability in the audience like the experiences in rituals that anthropologists call liminal. Liminal experiences might be feel as a crisis. You are in this completely alone and do not know what will happen to you. This elusive transition of being in between on the way to cross a boundary makes something happen. You change, and you discover that you might be someone you never imagined possible. The abrupt shifts became notched in one's soul. You couldn't defend yourself from the text and music. It took your breath away. You were shaken. Shocked, dumbfounded. I was taken by the losses of someness. Couldn't get away, felt sick. The most difficult issues. Here we were in it, allowing ourselves to be upset, violated, and out of that has grown something new. I wonder it. Can the effect provoked by the shibboleth format improve leadership training? Can the power of poetry and music make leaders change behavior? And above all, how do I know if it really works? So, research funds gave me an opportunity 
to create and test this concept at the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. That's how we came to have a group of 25 managers listening to the readings and music, and then writing and talking about anything they liked for nearly one year. Meanwhile, the other 25 managers attended a more conventional leadership training led by the Swedish Defense Force. <laughs> All managers were randomly selected into the two groups and were not told what the different programs involved. This way we could compare the Shibboleth art program and the conventional one in a strictly scientific way. Each manager completed psychological tests and self-assessment, and subordinates were asked to evaluate the manager's behavior. Blood samples were collected to test for hormones related to stress. And we didn't stop there. A change in the manager's behavior after the program should make a difference in the workplace. So we collected the subordinates' blood samples too and followed their mental health with questionnaires. All evaluations were made three times before the start, two months after the end, and six months later. What did we find? We found striking differences between the two groups. The statistically significant results indicate long-lasting effects. In prosocial motivation, we saw that it increased in the shibboleth leaders, the red bar, and it did not change in the control group leaders, the blue bar. Psychological resilience increased at eight months after the end in the shibboleth leaders, the red bar, and it decreased in the control group leaders, the blue bar. Here is the leader's behavior evaluated by the subordinates. First, we have responsibility, the courage to act and make necessary decisions, and then stress coping, the ability to handle complexity, ambivalence, and insecurity. <coughs> Both responsibility and stress coping increase in the shibboleth leaders, and it decreases in the control group leaders, a significantly higher blood concentration of the regenerative hormone DHEAS, the red line, was found in both managers and subordinates in the shibboleth group, compared to the control group, the blue line. Confirming the hormone findings, both managers and subordinates in the shibboleth group reported improved mental health. They were in a better frame of mind. They had more energy and were sleeping better. Their self-esteem had improved and also ability to deal with conflicts. In the control group, managers and subordinates reported decreased mental health and also decreased ability to deal with conflicts. Finally, decreased discrepancy between managers' self-scoring and subordinate scoring of managers indicates greater self-awareness and humility in the shibboleth leaders. In the control group, contrary to the more objective results, the manager's self-ratings show improved leadership. This indicates a dangerous tendency to self-deception. In contrast to the conventional program, shibboleth provoke a deep critical self-examination breaking self-illusions through a challenging art form and demanding harrowing content, forcing leaders to see the world through the eyes of others. The shibboleth plays were quite unpleasant. I, I couldn't be indifferent. You're forced to deal with what is presented. I was forced to really sit down and think through uh, what does what I just heard mean. So I started looking at myself. What is good and evil? When do I choose it? Like these uh, concentration camps. 
does one make the choice later or now? I've never been through this before. This has got closer to me in a way I haven't experienced before. When they were trapped on the train, it touched me incredibly. My airway suddenly felt very constricted and I could almost see the gas in front of me. What the hell is it that means anything in this world more than life? The effect of Shibolet was not only transformative on the managers, but also transferred to other people, improving their psychological and biological resilience. The key learning from this research is that strong art experiences connecting us closer to actual reality make the world felt and the extent of human suffering ceases to be an abstraction. Leader responsibility cannot be based on ideas but on closeness to other human beings. So now I have a new question to work on. Could this approach lead to long-lasting solutions to social problems? Could the power of poetry and music linking our senses to the world prevent, for instance, extremism by inducing deep respect for life and human dignity as contrary values? Yes, we carry everything within us. God and heaven and hell. And earth and life and death. And all of history, either you live in laughter or tears, it is still only one life. Life. In its thousands of details and nuances. And movements. One, one single, single large life. life.